Hello, hello, my dear little Photoshop magicians. How was your life? I just woke up and decided that I will do a new tutorial just for you, my dear friends. Okay, today we're going to create this stunning artwork. Look at that. How creepy. How beautiful at the same time. Mwah. You have to agree that it is magnificent. But before we get into the tutorial, let me again tell you that this video is sponsored by me and by my premium Photoshop classes that will teach you how to create lots of crazy art, how to animate your artworks, how to use 3D in Photoshop, how to use Smash Tool and many other crazy techniques that you have never even heard of, okay? You can just enroll into membership for $7 per month and access all of the classes and get my personal support. Link in description. <laughs> So this is the image that we're going to use. It's an image by Nojan Namdar. Oh, that's that. I mean, this image is so beautiful. I was so lucky that I actually found it. It actually has many pretty cool images in case you want to do something else. So you can check him out if you want to. Okay, guys, so let's go and click create new project. And uh, we're gonna do width 1000, height 1 to 50, pixels selected, resolution 300, color mode RGB color. And if everything just like here, then let's click that sweet create button. Create. Now let's take our beautiful image and let's just import it to Photoshop. Wow, look at that. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can get this beautiful face even closer. Oh yeah, baby, that looks good. Let's just click that sweet okay button now. Okay, and let's now go and leave this background layer. It's always there and so useless. Okay, why are you always there? No one loves you, just go away. Now the first thing that we need to do is of course we need to change the colors. So part one, camera raw filter. Let's go to filter, let's go to camera raw filter. This is the filter that I use in order to bring my images some nice colors, give my images some nice colors. Let me quickly load settings for these colors and then I will explain you what I did and why I did it, okay? So I'm just gonna go here and load settings so I can load my colors because I don't remember the exact numbers. And now I will show it to you and tell you what I did. So as you can see, let's look at temperature. As you can see, I did a little bit of more yellow because before it was like that, as you can see, it's a little bit colder, but I decided to make it more warmer. I don't know what, because I just, I like warm artworks. You know? I don't, I don't like cold artworks. I also added a little bit of green, so it's not too purple, because when it's too purple, then it's like, eh, too much, too much. There needs to be balance. I decreased contrast, because when you have too much contrast, then the image is getting destroyed. The colors are just getting all pixelated and destroyed. That's why when you decrease contrast, you can actually work with image with colors much better. I played with this. You can play with this on your own if you want to, or just copy my numbers. I add a little bit of texture to give this image some nice feeling. So for example, if the texture is minus 100, look what's going to happen. It's too soft. You don't feel anything. But when you have all this texture, you feel all the details. You feel it's, that it's so real. Okay, there you can just copy my numbers. Uh, now we'll go here to HSL adjustments. Here, um, I just played with reds and greens. So basically what I did is, as you can see, look, look at all the oranges, you see? They are so dull, but I want them to be pinky. If I just make this to the left, as you can see, now we get these really nice red colors. The same is with greens. Mm. Okay, just a little bit of change in her eyes when I do that. As you can see, the, her eyes are a little bit dull, but now the eyes are a little bit brighter. So with that said, let's just see what was before and after. So if I just click here, and boom, shakalaka boom, look at that. Before, after. Isn't this much more beautiful? At least for our artwork purposes, it's definitely going to be much better, more interesting. Let's just click that sweet okay button now. Let me drink my tea. <sighs> Amazing. Every morning starts with a cup of tea. If I don't have a cup of tea in the morning, then that means I didn't have morning at all. So, when we did that, now it's time to destroy the face, to make some holes in the face. I know this sounds horrible, but we need to do it, okay? It's for, for art purposes. So what I'm gonna do, I will take this uh, selection tool, rectangle marquee tool, okay? Make sure your parameters are just like mine. And then I will go and create a rectangle. And I'm gonna hold shift, just to make sure that my rectangle is actually square. So if I just hold shift and I draw, look at that. And this is good, good, good. Now I want to go to select and uh, transform selection and uh, I, I'm gonna move this first of all a little bit to the left and I will rotate this like that. Boom, put it a little bit higher and I mean this looks fine to me at least. Maybe it's too big, maybe we should make it a little bit smaller so we can just click and drag this and make it, put it here. Okay, okay, too small. Mm, yeah, it's, we need to play it with, with the sizes. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Oh, 
Okay, I guess. I guess this is fine. Let's click OK. So now we just need to click create mask. Boom shakalaka boom. Well, that's not exactly what we need. We actually need the other way around it. So we need to have a hole here and then the whole face here. That's what I'm gonna do. I will just select this mask. I will go to Piropirtis panel. Okay. Oh, uh, you what you can also do, you can just double click here and uh, then you will just this thing opened and then I can just click invert. Wow! Maybe also for some of you it will ask you some kind of window here. Do you want to open properties? Blah blah blah. Just click yes, I want to open properties. So as you can see when I click this now, it's empty inside but we have the face here. Good. Well, what I need? Okay. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Everything is good, guys. Don't, no need to panic, okay? No need to panic. Part two, the curtains. So now we will need to create this kind of curtains that are kind of opening her face. So how are we gonna do that is a very interesting question. So first of all, let's duplicate this image. Let's click right button here, click uh, duplicate layer. Let's click that OK button. Wow, now we have a duplicate. Oh yeah, baby. Now let's invert this um, mask again. So just select it, go to properties panel, just click invert. And look at that, boom, shakalaka, boom. Beautiful, beautiful. So now if I turn this off and on, as you can see, hole, no hole, hole, no hole. So. Now when we have this, um, we need to convert this into a smart object. Let's click right button here and let's click convert to, and when you click, okay, not here, not here, but somewhere here, right button, right button, convert to smart object, boom. And now as you can see, it's only the layer itself, nothing else attached to it. <clears throat> I'm sorry if you're hearing any stupid noises in the background. My fridge is not going to shut up for some reason. I don't know why it's just making these weird noises. So. Okay, let's now select this and now I need to basically divide my curtain into four parts. So one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna start here and just gonna create this rectangle like that. So as you can see, I need want to make it perfectly divided. Boom, this looks good. Okay, now when I have this, let's go here and let's click create mask. Boom. So now I need to create a copy of this layer here. So again, right, right click, duplicate layer, okay. So now I need to create, I need to bring back the second part of our curtain. For that, first of all, what I need to do, I have this here, this layer, and uh, I need to click here to unlink the link between the image and the mask. So because if I move this now, as you can see, I'm moving the image with the mask together. Let's go back. But now I want to unlink this. Boom, if I click, as you can see, the link doesn't exist anymore. Now I can go click on the mask. And now if I click here and start dragging this, let's go scroll. Look, look what's going to happen. I'm moving the mask, boom. Oh yeah, baby. You just move it a bit. And now we have the second part of our beautiful curtain. Let's move it a little bit to the right, like that. Also, if you hold shift, uh, then it's going to be on the same line like the other curtain. So if I just put it here, like that. Okay, now as you can see, I got here some empty space. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to edit and uh, free transform. And I can just again click and drag this again, hold shift and boom, okay? Okay, so as you can see, now it's good here. Let's just click that sweet OK button. And uh, let's now again make a copy of this. So. I'm just gonna click right button, go to duplicate layer and click OK. And uh, I'm just gonna take again my mask and this time I'm gonna bring it down. Look at that again, hold shift to bring it down and voila, a little bit to the right just to make it in the center. Again, we make a copy of this, duplicate layer, click OK. Again, we go, we select the mask and then I just move it here, hold shift and boom. Oh my God, this is so good. So now when we have this, now we need to take all of them and transform them into a smart object one by one. So here, for example, click, click right button, choose convert to smart object, boom. Another one, click right button, choose convert to smart object. Another one, click right button, choose convert to smart object. And the last one as well. Oh yeah, baby. So if you came so far, congratulations, my friend. You already learned so much. Let me also show you one more thing. Look at this beautiful artwork. Look at this, this stunning sweatshirt. I have actually my own shop where I sell my uh, t-shirts with my artworks and if you like to have something artsy on you then you should definitely check the link below because I have there some really really nice t-shirts for you my friend for example these bad rainbows one of my favorites oh my god look at that so good oh yeah or this one again bad rainbows because the rainbow is destroying her face and as a stunning one or this one just colorful cries, also pretty nice t-shirt. So just check the link below. So now what we're gonna do is, um, I will take every single one of them by one by one and start warping them. Part three, the curve. So let's select first of all this one and uh, you just click on it, as you can see I've selected it. Let's go to um, edit, transform and let's go to warp. And now what I can do, if I just click here, 
I can click and drag and look at that. I can just put it up. Oh yeah, baby. And just click that split OK button. And one curve is done. Let's do the same here. Click again here. Edit, transform, warp. And again, I can just click and drag. And yeah, just make, just try to make them out with different. You can also just click and drag like that. You know, you can give them different shapes just to make it more interesting. Let's click here again, edit, transform, warp. And again, I'm just clicking and dragging like that. Oh yeah, oops, oops, let's go back. Try to not do too many drastical changes like that. Good, 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 good. Let's click here. Let's click edit, three transform, transform, I mean, and warp. And just click and drag. Okay, I should not sing, I'm a really bad singer. Okay, so just, I should probably just shut up. I'm talking too much, I think. Oh, <laughs> look at this beautiful flower inside the face. So this is good. This is good. Eh? Now what we need to do, we need to make sure that we can separate these parts from the face. That's why we're actually going to make them a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a brightness contrast layer. I will just bring the brightness higher. Oh, look at that. Yep. Now we'll go back to my layers and I'm now I'm just gonna invert this now. So again, go to properties panel and click invert. And now as you can see, I have here this black layer and I will, I will take my brush tool. I will take my white color. And of course you need to understand how masks works if you want to do this. Okay, if you don't know how mask works, then you will fail. So please go and learn how masks work if you don't know how masks are actually working. So here I have a black color and uh, I can now choose white, uh, white color here. And um, if I make my brush a little bit smaller, make sure your hardness is around 80%. Oh, this is 100, this is 100. So what I want to do, I want to start drawing here. And because I have white color here, when I draw with white color on a black mask, I'm actually revealing the effect that I ha was hiding. So if you remember, I did brightness contrast, but I hid it by making everything black here. And now if I draw with white color, I'm actually revealing the effect. So this is how masks work. So let me just put it here. And yeah, I'm probably just gonna make this speed because you need to go over all the places and um, be very careful to go on the borders like that. And if you effed up and did did something like that you can always go back here go change this to black color and remove this part with black color so black is to remove white is to reveal let's go back to white Oh my god, I'm finally done. This took me so much time. How long is this tutorial? 23 minutes already. Oh my god. What is going on with my hair? I look horrible. I mean, I know I'm handsome, but it's just, just today I look horrible. Sorry guys. <laughs> and it's pretty hot here. So what I want to do now, uh, now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of texture on top of this just to make them look like it's the inside part and how we're gonna do that is a very good question so um first of all let's start with this one so if i turn this off and on as you can see it's uh turning off and on not just the curve but the everything else because this was originally a cutout first of all let's go and name all of this so this is for example uh bottom left let's see this right bottom oops bottom right, top right, top left. Now let's create a copy of this, click right button, go to duplicate layer, 
and I'm just gonna name this now top left noise okay and uh, now what I'm gonna do I will go to filter noise and add noise and I have here 25 uniform as you can see um, yeah 25 should be fine let's just click OK now so now the problem is that I have noise not only here but also here and here but I want the noise to be only here because this kind of the inside part of the face in order to do that, what I need to do, I just need to copy this mask here because on this mask we have already uh, basically selected this part of the artwork so if I like turn this off and as you can see only this part is selected so that's why what I'm gonna do, I will copy this from here to here I'm gonna do this uh, I will hold ALT if you're using Win if I'm using Windows if you're using Mac, hold OPTION, so ALT or OPTION you hold it, you click on this mask, you drag it you hold and drag and when you're here first you release your mouse button and then you release the alt or option okay if it didn't work for you please repeat this uh, watch this part again and do it until you're good good so as you can see now if i turn this off and on boom i have noise only here and this is basically the background of it so i have kind of separated them let's do the same to all the other parts so again i select um i select top right I duplicate it, I go to filter and now as you can see I have add noise here because when you like it will this place always shows you the last filter that you used and I used add noise last one so I just click here and I just click ok boom and now again let me just copy it here boom chicka boom wow the same here bottom right duplicate filter I'm just gonna copy it here bottom left the last one filter I'm just gonna copy it here so now as you can see we have here lots of layers and now not to get um, problems with that what I'm gonna do I will just take all of this and put it in a group so if you just click here and then you hold shift and click here boom as you can see everything in between is also selected and I can just click group and voila and let me just name it the curtain because I think that's the best name for this thing now part 3 the shadows so now we need to add shadows behind these curtains how are we gonna do that my dear friend is a really good question so first of all uh, I will go to this image I will click create new layer as you can see new empty layer I have here it's below the curtains but above the image I will take my brush tool okay okay watch carefully watch carefully and uh, what I'm gonna do I will make it a little bigger I will make hardness zero man this is too big yeah so now I need to draw shadows but the shadow needs to be only behind this part here behind the curtains the problem is that if I draw it now here as you can see okay it's not shadow but just it's just an example okay it doesn't matter what color this is just an example as you can see I draw behind this part but I'm not but I need to draw on this part but behind this part how I'm gonna do that is a very good question my dear friend let me go back first of all what I will do is I will bring this um, layer actually above the curtains and then I will go and I will copy this mask here so if I just again hold alt or option and click and drag boom that means for example now if I select the layer very important when you draw don't select the mask select the layer okay and if I draw as you can see it's drawing only on the curtains let's go back but I need it to be reversed. I need to I need it to draw everywhere except the curtains, so I can draw behind the curtains. That's why I click on the mask. I go to properties panel and I click invert. And I go to layers. As you can see, it's inverted. I select the empty layer now. And now if I start drawing, look what's gonna happen. Boom! It's drawing behind the curtains. Just what I needed this whole time. Let's go back. Well, of course, I don't need green color. So I will just click here to bring back normal colors as you can see now I have black color and uh, make sure hardness is zero, opacity around uh, 10%, flow around 10%, oh, I can make, oh yeah this is fine. And now for example if I start drawing here, so for example here I need to make shadow here as you can see, boom we have some really nice soft, soft shadow. The same here, I like it, I think it looks good. The same a bit here. The same a bit here. And if I now turn this off and on, big difference. Now it looks more realistic. Uh, maybe I should add a little bit of more shadows here. I'm not sure, but because it doesn't really. No, no, no let's not do it. Okay. So now when we have this, uh, finally, next part the 3D eyes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me save this. Oh my god, what am I doing? I didn't save this. So I'm just gonna call this uh, eyes inside face, which is logical because eyes are inside face. But in our case, it's a little bit different thing. So now to create this um, eyes, we're actually going to use Photoshop's 3D features. Oh yeah. 
you heard it right, Photoshop 3D features. But don't worry, don't, you don't have to be afraid, okay? I'm gonna do it the easiest way. Um, I will show you only the basic stuff, only the things that you need to create these 3D eyes. If you wanna learn Photoshop 3D functions in depth, okay, I have a course using Photoshop 3D features to create stunning artworks. And I know you're looking at it and like, wait, it costs $49. First of all, yes, it's totally worth it. Okay, secondary, secondary, can I say that? Anyway, you don't actually have to pay this if you access the member, if you enroll to membership, which is a monthly fee. And in membership, you can just start with $7 and then you don't have to pay like $49 or $29 for a single course. You just access everything. So what is actually in this course? As you can see, I show how to create this, this stunning 3D artwork using creating a 3D sphere and this artwork in general. I show how to create these cables, as you can see, which I call Android cables. It basically gives you some really nice futuristic look. This is also done using Photoshop 3D. So you learn a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, now let's go back. So um, for that eyes, uh, I will actually need a separate image. And uh, let me find my image. Okay, this is the image. Ooh, look at that. So what is Photoshop going to do? Photoshop is basically going to take this image and Photoshop is going to wrap this image inside as around the sphere. Wrap it, wrap, wrap this image around the sphere. Just like a burrito. So uh, now what we're gonna do, I will just create a new empty layer and um, no, 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 I'm just gonna do it the other way around, width 1 to 50, height 1000. So let's click create. Boom, as you can see now it's like that. Let me take this image and place it here and just make it a bigger, put it in the middle. Let's click OK. Let's also delete this background. It's always there and so stupid. So now when we have this, let's actually give this a try. Let's go to 3D. Let's go to new mesh from layer. Let's go to mesh preset and let's go to sphere. Okay? And let's see what's going to happen. Just wait for it. It's going to ask you if you want to, if you want to go to 3D layer. Okay? Click no. Don't click yes. Okay? Whenever Photoshop asks you something, please read. Don't just click anything. Okay? Even if you click yes, it's not a big problem, but just click no. Because if you click yes, then the whole Photoshop is going to change. In case you clicked yes, uh, in order to go back, you will have to go here and click Essentials. Because you will, be, you will have 3D, you just click Essentials and, and Photoshop goes back to normal. So as you can see now, if I zoom in, um, yeah. Well, first of all, um, the problem is that I don't actually see the eye. And uh, I don't know if you're going to have this problem because 3D can act differently for many people. So that's why, for example, I cannot see the eye. Um, I will go to 3D here, to 3D panel. Uh, you can find it in window 3d if you can't see the eye clearly then you don't need to do anything okay you're good but if you can't see the eye if you also dark for you then follow my instructions so again you find a 3d panel here as you can see i have it here uh, then you go from here to environment you go to properties now and here first of all you turn off shadows okay very important and uh, you make the color from black to white you click here you make it white and voila and now for example um if you go back to layers you go to 3d you go to sphere and here you see the eye but uh, first of all i can it's too bright we will change it later but i can see that the eye is a bit weird so that's not the eye that i want so i'm just gonna go back so if you just go back and back and back, boom, to the image, okay? If we go back to the image, good. So now, in order to make sure that the eye is not weird, I need to make this eyeball small, actually. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to uh, use quick selection to select this eye. I will duplicate layer and I will create a mask. So now, for example, my eye is on the separate layer. Now, uh, I will turn this off. I will create a new empty layer. I will take spot healing brush tool and I will just start deleting this eye from here because I don't need it here. I already have a copy of it here. Good. Now I turn off the copy and now I'm going to make the copy smaller. So I'm just going to go to edit and uh, free transform and I will just make it smaller like that. Maybe too small. This should be fine. Let's now again uh, just select everything. So you select here, you click here, you hold shift, you click here. Everything is selected. Click right button and choose smart object. Now you go to 3D, new mesh from layer, mesh preset and sphere. Where is it? No. Okay. I still have the problem, I is still weird, let's go back. So also let's go back again where everything is separated. Uh, what I'm gonna do is um, I will go to edit, free transform. And now I need to splash my eye a bit. So I'm just gonna go to, I'm, I'm gonna click here to not have a link between heights and width. And like this I can actually make my eye width splashed. As you can see now width is 80% only instead of 100%. I put it here in the middle again, click OK, make sure this is in the middle. Now again, let's select everything. So you click here, you alt shift, you click here, right button, convert to smart object. Let's go now to 3D, new mesh, mesh preset and sphere. Where is it? Where are you? Good, no. And now it looks much better. So again, let's go to 3D, environment, 
properties. Let's turn off shadow. Let's make the color white uh, and let's make the intensity around 60. That seems to be fine. Let's go to layers. Let's go to 3D and choose sphere. Nope. Let's click on this uh, infinite light. When I click on it, as you can see, I have this here and I can just click and drag to rotate this around. See if you can make your image brighter like that. No. Okay. That means that we made it too dark. So let's again go to environment, click on properties and change intensity to 80%. Let's now go back to layers, 3D, sphere. And yeah, I think it looks good now. Let's click on infinite light. Let's see if we can actually change. No, it's fine. Okay. So this is good. Now I will, I will go to this layer and now what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to copy this to our artwork. So I will just take this and drag it here. And when it's open, I drag it here inside and then I release it. Boom, shakalaka, boom. Let's put it actually on top. So now uh, when we have this here on top, uh, what I want to do is I want to create a few versions of it. So I'm just going to create a duplicate again, duplicate layer. Yes. So let's, um, let's go here, click right button and choose convert to smart object. So now as you can see, this is not a 3D anymore, this is just a normal image. Let's turn this off. Let's go to this 3D layer now. Let's go to 3D. Now I want to rotate it. Okay, I want to give our eye different perspectives as you can see here, for example. Uh, some of the eyes are looking to the left, some of them are looking to the right and so on. That's what I want to do. I want to go to sphere. I want to select this rotation. And if I just now click and rotate, as you can see, we can make it look to the right. Good. Let's now again create a duplicate because we need few views. Yes. So I'm just gonna go and convert one of the duplicates into a smart object, right button, convert to smart object. And also to turn this off for now. Let's go back to 3D. Again, we select 3D, we select sphere. And now I want to rotate this, let's say to the left, a little bit, maybe he's looking down. Again, let's create duplicate, let's click okay. Let's convert this into a smart object. And now let's go to the 3D layer. And now, maybe probably the last view, uh, maybe we should look at, maybe we should make it look up like that and again. Right button, convert to smart object. Good. So now I can turn all of them on. And uh, what I need to do is uh, I'm just going to click on first one, hold shift, click on the last one, and then go to edit and free transform. And I'm just going to make all of them. Oops, oops, let's go back. Uh, I forgot to turn on the link between width and height, and now I can make this smaller proportionally. Good. Um, actually, it's still too big. So, yep, this is good. Now let's actually just start putting them to the left, right, and so on. Uh, but actually, we need to select all of them and bring them behind the curtains. Yep. Now we can just create, oops, we can just create duplicates of them. First, for that, I will turn off, uh, where is it? Yeah, I will turn off the brightness, contrast, just, I will turn off the shadow, just for now. And uh, I mean, in order to create duplicates, best way is actually to hold Alt or Option if you didn't know that. So for example, I can just click on this eye. I can hold Alt or Option, and then I can click and drag. Boom, just the easiest way to do this. And I can do the same here, for example, with this one. And uh, let's, uh, let's just do a few of them. You know, I'm just gonna put one here. And we can actually just also rotate them. So just open free transform and start rotating them. Do the same here. Again, rotate them just to give them different views. So you don't look at the same place. Put it here. Don't worry, we're going to fix it this um like that so put it here put it here maybe put it here just have many different many many eyes looking at different people oh yeah baby okay i feel like they are too small uh let's actually just try to make them a little bit bigger select everything again edit free transform and make them bigger just in general and now let's rearrange them so that we don't have empty spaces good uh let's now select all of them you click on the first one, you hold shift, you click on the last one and then click group. And I'm just going to create, create a mask for them so they don't go outside the uh, hole basically. And what I will do, I will just, oops, I will just copy this mask. Again, hold alt or option, copy it to the group, boom. And I will invert it. Select it, go to properties and click invert. Then now let's turn on the shadows, the lightness. What I want to do now is actually very, very interessante. Okay, listen carefully, carefully. Let's open all of this, click on the first one, hold shift, click on the right one. Let's now click right button and choose convert to smart object. I want to go to filter and camera raw filter because I want to edit the cost a bit because I feel like the eyes are not exciting enough. So I want them a little bit more orange. I want to increase the haze, uh, shadows, increase shadows, increase contrast a bit. A texture. Oh yeah, baby. Let's see if we can do something interesting here. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I like this. Okay, I think this is good. Let's click OK. It's just they're too bright. And I'm just gonna go to edit, I mean image adjustments and brightness contrast. I'm just gonna make the bright a little bit darker. 
contrast a little bit lower as well. Good. So now I need to create shadows. For that, I will just create um, any empty layer here in the same group, just above the eyes. I will take my brush tool and I will start creating shadows. So make sure you have black color, the same parameters like I do. And now we can just start drawing. Like that. Okay, uh, now we just need to uh, adjust a few things. For example, here, the brightness contrast. As you can see, I did it wrong. I need to select my brush tool, select black color, and just make everything 100 and uh, get rid of it here. It's not supposed to be there. Good. Oh, I'm so tired. Am I we recording? Oh, I was about to kill myself. So now um, let's uh, let's actually double click on the eyes. Now when we double click, as you can see, we can open them in a separate window. So again, you just double click here, boom, boom on the thumbnail, and it's going to be opened in a separate window. I want to add shadows to them. So for example, let's take the top one. You click uh, somewhere on the empty space here to it, boom, boom. And then you just choose drop shadow and boom, a shadow is created. Uh, let's, me, let's, uh, let's just make it a little bit harder like that. Okay. And I want to do shadows for many of them. So not for all of them, but for many of them. Again, just double click here on the empty space, click drop shadow and boom, we have a shadow here. The same thing goes, um, let's say here, just double click. Just to give it, because shadows give it more realism. Well, let's just make it a little bit um, down like that. Okay, um, we have it here. We have it. Let's also add it here. Double click, drop shadows. Let's now click file and save. Wow. Okay, now we have few last touches. And uh, last touches are stuff like, for example, um, first of all, you can rearrange your eyes if you don't like how they look, because I don't think they look as good as in my original artwork because I didn't arrange them correctly, but you can just arrange them on your own. Um, what I will do, I will go here and uh, I'm just gonna take one of my favorite textures and uh, you can find the link to the texture also in the tutorial. I mean, in the description, I'm just gonna make this bigger like that and I will change the connection. This looks nice, but that's not what we want. Overlay, soft, soft light probably. And now just add a little bit of brightness, contrast. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Now let's uh, select everything, click here, hold shift, click here and click right button and convert to smart object. Okay guys, now the last part is to add some, again, camera raw filter. So we select this, filter, camera raw filter, just to add a little bit of more interesting colors here. And again, you can just play with it how you want to. Um, you know, just depending on your taste, maybe a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of vibrance, maybe like that. Sure, 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 sure. Let's go to HS adjustments. Let's see. Okay, let's click OK. And voila. Before, after. I think it looks freaking amazing. Guys, if you like this, uh, make sure to check the links in the description to support me, you know, to get some of the t-shirts or to get one of my classes. Love you. Bye-bye, I'm really tired. I will go and uh, eat now because I didn't have breakfast yet.